Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here this morning. Thank you all again for joining us here for another SciTech Data Exchange webinar. We do host these on a monthly basis. Today, we are going to be discussing collecting equipment data from sensors, non-CNC, and legacy machines with SciTech Data Exchange. If you look up in the top center of this image, you will see what we call the SRC, and that is how we can connect to a plethora of different machine types uh, and for manufacturers like yourself to pull that information off of machines and make manufacturing charts and dashboards that can help improve your shop floor performance. So the first question we are going to go over is what exactly is an SRC? The SRC stands for Status Relay Controller, and the SRC is a programmable logic controller. And the Status Relay Controller is a low-cost hardware device that comes pre-programmed and ready to work with SciTech Data Exchange for monitoring your shop floor equipment. The SRC can be connected to a wired Ethernet or wireless network and is capable of monitoring digital and analog signals with built-in functionality around shop floor equipment. The SRC is available in two different configurations, the SRC standard and then the SRC E and the E in that stands for extended. If there's two things that I'd like you to take away from this slide is that uh, there's no programming required. We do that all in house here at SciTech and then ship them out to you. So if you've decided that you want to uh, collect data and improve uh, your shop floor performance from an older machine, uh, we will determine what is necessary for that and ship you out an SRC that is ready to go. The SRC platform is very flexible and scalable as well so that you can uh, have all of the equipment inside of your shop floor facility, new or old, enjoy the benefits of machine monitoring. SciTech Data Exchange collects machine information pulled off of most modern CNC machines over your network. The legacy equipment uh, that you guys may have still being used out on your shop floor uh, can still enjoy the benefits of machine monitoring with data exchange. And that also includes uh, manual processes as well, such as machines like presses, punches, older manual lays, really older manual equipment in general. And if you look over on the right-hand side of the image, uh, the SRC, you can see a bunch of different holes on the side. And those are uh, inputs that can connect to these types of machinery. And there's two different kinds of inputs on the SRC. We have digital inputs, and those can tap into common industry components such as stack lights or relays, as well as analog inputs. And an, ex an example of an analog input that we can collect information off of would be a current sensor slash amp clamp that you could put a spindle wire around and receive information if the machine is running or not running and other production metrics that can be found inside of SciTech Data Exchange. Now we can connect from all sorts of different sensor types, but some common ones are thermal couples, pressure sensors, humidity sensors uh, that can be utilized with the SRC. And all of the rules for gathering this data collection for the machines can be configured inside of SciTech Data Exchange. And there's also default rule collections as well to just get up and going very quickly and not spend a lot of time and worry about this. And all the data that is collected from this process is presented the exact same as uh, data that is collected over ethernet. So your manufacturing charts and dashboards are all still the same. The data is still correct. Everything is the exact same across all of the different licensing level and the provisions that they provide, such as the notification feature set for SiteTech Data Exchange, which includes email, text, and Microsoft team notifications that you will receive in real time. Now, the next question that we can answer is, what can be monitored by an SRC? So first, before really answering that, I'd like to go over the different connectivity types that are supported inside of SciTech Data Exchange. And if you look at this image inside of the desktop version of SciTech Data Exchange, uh, next to the user tab, we have a connectivity tab. And these will show you all the different methods that Data Exchange uses for collecting information off of your guys' shop floor equipment. Now, the two most broad uh, connection types that we can pull information off of really any machine 
uh, or not any machine, but machines that are supported by MT Connect and OPC UA. As well, uh, we also have direct communication methods for machines utilizing FANUC Focus, Akuma Think, and Modbus TCP protocols. And we have a few that are going to be coming soon in an update for next month in the newest release of SciTech Data Exchange, including updates for direct connectivity for Siemens machines and Heidenheim. And somewhere in the pipeline as well, we will also be supporting Mazak. Now, with the SRC, you can pull information off of all sorts of older equipment types, as well as sensors. So what we're looking at here is a few of the other common sensors that you can pull information off of, including a current sensor, a vibration sensor, a proximity sensor, as well as a fill level sensor. If your machine utilizes these kind of sensors, uh, we can pull information off of them and you can still enjoy the same benefits of machine monitoring through SciTech Data Exchange with them. So I kind of already covered some of this, but what can be covered are CNCs, fabrication equipment. For those of you that are joining us that we met at FabTech, this applies to you guys. Uh, another example would be a manual welder and then sensors. And, you know, I just showed you a few, but, you know, we've had uh, requests come in all over the board for things even like ovens that you can get, you know, a, uh, a thermal couple or a uh, temperature sensor from and even palletizers. Uh, you name it, data listeners, et cetera, use cases. Um, as I've already kind of covered, you know, if you look at this image, uh, the SRC is great for collecting information off of older CNC, manual processes, tapping into stack lights. Machines with no relays or stack lights can connect via an amp clamp into a spindle wire. And for aerospace manufacturers, a thermal couple can be embedded on a table that can collect temperature and humidity from the environment. So this is all great in theory, but it's nice to see things actually work in real time and you know, to show that it, like I said, works. So if you've had the opportunity to stop by any of the larger manufacturing trade shows in the last few years, such as Hughes Fabtech, East Tech, West Tech, whatever tech, IMTS, you've probably seen this demonstration board that we have. And what you're looking at here is how we show this SRC work in real time uh, by having a bunch of sensors onto a board and kind of simulating the cycle process of a machine. So if you look up there on the top left, we have a status relay controller. And then next to that, we have a current sensor, a relay, as well as a stack light with a stack light control, and then a temperature sensor below that. So what I'm gonna do here is show you guys a video of all this uh, actually working. So we're gonna cover different sensor types and how they work with the SciTech Data Exchange SRC. First, we are gonna start with amp clamps and spindle wires. And the way that we are going to go about this is we are going to simulate uh, the machine cycling by hooking a drill up to the amp clamp and then running it. So as we can see, we have our demo station here. And in the top left, we have our status relay controller as well as the amp clamp next to it. Here I am running a drill, simulating that a machine would then be in cycle. So if you look here in the center, we have our demo station. And as you can see right now in the top left, uh, the specific equipment status right now is in unknown downtime. But then as we are be running that drill, we can watch it go from unknown downtime to in cycle, showing that the machine is running and then that it is collecting the amps off of a drill. And then inversely, when you let go of the drill, the machine will stop recording that cycle and then it'll go back into an unknown downtime. Next, we are going to discuss stack lights on legacy equipment. So here I am pressing the in cycle button on a stack light controller and you can see 
in the top right that the green light is engaged, showing that it's going from unknown downtime to then in a normal cycle, simulating a machine running. Next, I'm going to be hitting an M1, M0 stop with that flashing orange. And then in real time, you will see this update inside of SciTech Data Exchange as an M0 waiting for operator. And maybe that is one of your employees going out for a lunch break, going to the bathroom, a changeover, uh, taking out a part or something like that. And finally, what we're going to show here is an alarm. So this is myself engaging an alarm. And as you see in real time, we have the blink blinking red light indicating that there is alarm. And then that reflects as well in real time inside of SciTech Data Exchange. Now, finally, we're gonna be discussing thermal couples and uh, uh, heat sensors. And at the bottom right here, we have our temperature sensor. And as you increase heat coming off of a machine, that will once again reflect inside of SciTech Data Exchange, showing that we have an increase in temperature. Now, moving forward, we have two different types of SRCs, and I'm going to be discussing both of them. The first one is the SRC standard. And the SRC standard has four digital inputs that can be configured in a variety of ways. Each input can be configured to detect high or low signals, alternating signals, latch based on pulse or function as a counter. And this works well for monitoring machine conditions with a stack light, like I just showed you. Green for in cycle, yellow, orange uh, for showing a hold, an M1, M0 stoppage, and then red for showing an alarm. And then uh, this can also show other dig digital signals coming off of machines as well. And you can use this with sensors like proximity and current switches that are good for determining cycle status and part counts. Finally, we have the SRCE, and the E stands for extended. Uh, if you look over at the image on the right side, you can see that there is another module that is attached to it with more of those inputs. And the SRCE has all the functionality of the standard SRC, but with more options and choice of modules that you can add on to there for a variety of sensors that can be used with the SRC to monitor anything for machine health in addition to tracking utilization. And the choice of modules that you can get for this are both four analog inputs that run from zero milliamps to 20 milliamps, four analog inputs for zero to 10 volts, and then you can get another module that has eight additional digital inputs as well. Okay, so the first question that we have here, and Chris, I'm going to let you answer this one. And do you ever need to change the programming on the SRC? Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Chris, product specialist here. Uh, the programming itself is a, propri a proprietary program, so it is uh, capable of, of, of doing everything just, Jeff just spoke about um, without altering or anything like that. So it is a, a, a lockdown program that is in there, and no, we've never had to make changes to it before. Okay. The next question we have here is what type of wireless is built into the SRC? Chris, this is probably another good question for you. Sure. Um, the wireless built in the SRC, I, I guess this is just around the networking. It's just your standard um, networking, so it can work off of any wireless access point you have. Um, you just need to have the login credentials and it will connect like any other device, like your phone, anything like that. So pretty standard there. Okay, it looks like there's a couple questions here that I can answer. And what kind of sensor can the SRC collect data from? And the SRC can uh, collect any sensor that is from four to 20 milliamps on an analog, and then also zero to 10 volts with the extended module. 
Next up, we have what is the installation process for installing the SRC into an older machine? And there's probably about, there's two ways that we can go about doing this. And if you would like, you can also do it yourself. You could have your maintenance team do it and they can ensure that by uh, making sure that power is wired to the SRC through either a 24 volt DC standard outlet or a 120 volt AC outlet. Uh, we can also have our resellers come on site as well to install it. Um, if any of you use uh, data exchange from either Nexus or shop floor automations, they have a team of professional individuals that can come to your site as well and install it. Uh, another question we have here is I have a bunch of fabrication equipment and lots of PLCs already in the machine. How can I connect those? Chris, uh, can you answer that? Sure. So it depends on what the PLC is um, doing. It, the PLC itself is, you don't, you don't need to look at this device as a PLC. It's kind of a standalone collection device. It's not looking to alter or change any of the operations that are occurring on the machine. It's simply just tapping into wires to get those signals and then relaying that over to data exchange. So we could, depending on what kind of voltages are coming out of that PLC, if it's just 24 volts and then that, that's activating something on the machine, Further, further along the line. Um, we could just tap into those spots coming off the PLC directly if you know which one is doing what when the machine is performing a certain function. So if you have um, a machine with burners on it and maybe it has like a treadmill running parts through it, something of that nature, if you want to connect to multiple points on the machine to, to, to define the cycle or what's going on with the machine, you can do that. So you can say, okay, I want port one to be wired into the motor. I want port two to be wired into those burners. And both of those have to be active for me to say this machine is running.